Happy Sunday, everybody. Happy holidays. Uh, I have been a little distant for the last three months, and that is because I have been with my light side group and um, really serving them. So I've been a little distant with everybody, so I have to apologize, but I wanted to come back. I wanted to talk about mental health. I want to talk about stress because I know there's many of you that need it out there, and there's many of you that were messaging me when I was doing these, these live videos um, you know, over the summer and, and up to September, and then you messaged me and said like, where'd they go? Well, I've been working really, really closely with my, my light side group, and I have to tell you, it's just been one of the most rewarding things that I've done in my career. You know, not talking about clinical dentistry. Well, I guess we talked about clinical dentistry a little bit, but um, changing it to, you know, how clinical dentistry can impact your mental health or can decrease your stress or can decrease your burnout. And I think that it's so important that we talk about this now, especially with, of course, the pandemic. You know, lockdowns are happening more and more and people are being more and more isolated and especially with the holidays coming up. You know, the holidays are such a magical, wonderful time for people that are in a good headspace, for people that have family, for people that, you know, have friends. However, there's many of our colleagues and many people out there that the holidays are a very hard time for because they don't have family or they don't have friends or, you know, they've gone through a bad breakup or they're, you know, struggling with their profession like, like I was. And so I just wanted to come on and hope that I can do these, these talks more consistently because my next light side course doesn't happen for another month. So uh, early January is when signups start for that. So this next month, I hope to be more present with you guys, uh, you know, my, my general friends and followers before I go back really deep into serving my light side community. So um, thanks everybody for the messages. Let's, let's get into a few topics. Um, isolation, right? Isolation is a big problem, I think, with dentistry. Now, the good news is that many of us aren't practicing alone anymore. In my dad's generation, almost every dentist practiced alone, sometimes in a windowless office for decades without other doctor interactions, without other dentist interactions. And especially now with COVID and with learning online, we're not having the symposiums anymore where you can really talk to people that understand you. And this is why it's so important to have a community that understands you. And a community that understands you really, I think, needs to be dentists. And I think that's so important that we have other colleagues that understand what we go through every single day. And these are people that can immediately get what you're talking about and have sympathy for you and be able to give you real world recommendations and help. And so when you take the initial problem of isolation with dentistry, and then you add the pandemic on top of it, and then you add the holidays on top of it, this creates a lot of dentists that are going to have really mental health breakdowns during this time. And so I think it's important that we as a community come forward and start talking about this problem. We start saying like, this isn't something that we're going to sweep under the rug anymore. This is something that our profession is going to support. And it's been really, really great for me to see now other doctors, other dentists talking about this. You know, I don't wanna be the only one. So to see other colleagues going on their Instagram and, and talking about stress and burnout and mental health and um, uh, physical activity, you know, meditation, talking about this, I think 
is so, so, so important. So in, um, let me look at this study right here. This shows that fewer dentists are working as solo practitioners. So that I think is, is something good that's happening. So since, let's see when this was, since 1999, about 65% of dentists were working alone. And that has gone down to 50%. So half of us now are working in some type of a group setting. This is one of the positive things about, I think the DSO networks that have started. You know, at my practice, I have two other, two other doctors that I practice with. Uh, Dr. Matt Najad, who I think many of you guys know, and Dr. Mark Helm. And I have to tell you that having another dentist in your practice to bounce ideas off of is very important. Not only from a clinical standpoint, you know, you look at a radiograph, you may miss something. Or you're ordering something, you may not think, oh yeah, I have to get that you know, temporary titanium abutment. And oh, thanks Matt for telling me that. But also for the emotional aspect, because during my practice, we've had some emotional times. You know, difficult times with patients. Patients that don't want to pay. Patients that don't want to show up. Patients that don't want to take x-rays. Don't want to do exams. Uh, don't respect our time. They're not... They're uh, mean to our staff. You know, we have these emotional times that we have to sit together as, as leaders and figure out what to do. And doing that on your own is difficult because you have blind spots. You know, we're human, we make mistakes. We're not, we don't do everything perfect. And for me, having my two partners there to figure out these business decisions, these clinical decisions, is, has been really a joy for me and has, has reduced some my stress in many different, many different times. You know, uh, it has saved us. I, I know many cases where a patient will come in, we know that this is a difficult patient, that even if they need a full mouth reconstruction and they're willing to pay whatever they want, this is something that not only we're not gonna make money off of, but we're really gonna be stressed every single day. And so we need sometimes someone to take the rose colored glasses off of us and be like, wake up, Kyle. Like, you know, maybe you should refer this patient. Maybe we shouldn't get started with him or her. Um, so practicing with someone else with you, I think um, has been a really, a really great thing for me. Litigation. We know that litigation is a big problem in dentistry, especially in the United States, but I have learned through my light side course that it's not just in the United States. Um, you know, this happens all over. This happens in Romania and the UK and, and Canada and Australia and New Zealand. And, um, you know, many of the people who took my course open my eyes to this. I thought it was really just the United States. I still think it's worse in the United States, but it is a, a full world problem that doctors are practicing medicine and not just dentists, but you know, all doctors, doctors are practicing medicine and we're human and we're working on humans. So two things that aren't perfect, right? I'm not perfect and my patient's not perfect. However, the treatment is expected to be perfect. And if it's not, then many lawyers and patients simply think, okay, well, this is, this is, I'll just sue the doctor, right? And especially because they think doctors are rich, right? They think we're all rich. They don't know about the, um, the debt that we have, the, um, the overhead that we have. So it has really gotten crazy, I think, with, the litigation that's happening. And 5% of all medical malpractice trials involve a dentist. The average median price tag is $53,000 and that doesn't include the cost of legal defense. So this gets usually up to hundreds of thousands of dollars, but I don't know about you guys, but I don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars to be, uh, be spending on, on, on defending myself, right? And I think you have some negative aspects of this that comes from outside of dentistry. You have the 
the news talking about every time that a dentist does something wrong. I just saw someone post this week, dentist terrorizes his apartment complex in New York. And basically it was just, it, it was a guy that is terrorizing his apartment complex and annoying his neighbors and beating people up and stealing things. However, they focus so much on the fact that he was a dentist that it just gives this negative media portrayal of our profession. If he was a bricklayer or if he uh, worked in a factory or if he was a teacher or if he was, I don't know, a window washer, they wouldn't have focused on this problem, right? They wouldn't have been like, dent, you know, window washer terrorizes apartment complex. They would have just said, man terrorizes apartment complex. But because we have such a negative media portrayal, they have to focus on the fact that he's a dentist. And I always talk about uh, the guy that shot the lion. It, it was such a, a terrible thing that this man shot this beautiful majestic lion. However, they focus so much on the fact that he was a dentist. Dentist, dentist, dentist. Of course he killed this majestic creature. He's a dentist. Dentists are masochists and sadists. And we have this big media problem. We need positive media portrayals of our profession. And that's something that I'm working on. That's something that, you know, my good friend Miguel Stanley has done really well with um, his National Geographic documentaries and working on getting uh, slow dentistry idea out to the public. This is something that I know, again, my good friend uh, Christian Coachman is focused on too. Going to the public and saying like, look at what dentists can do, right? We're not here just to clean teeth and, you know, uh, fix a broken tooth. Like, we can change your life. We can give you your confidence back. We can allow you to date again. We can, you know, give your smile back and give your smile back is much more than the physical aspect of your smile, but the emotional aspect of getting your smile back. So there's a, a comment for, that says, I think it's because we generally hold doctors, dentists, etc., to higher standard than bricklayer, window washer, and yes, even teachers. It's not correct, but it goes back to your perfection theory. Yeah, I think that's right. You know, when people get into medicine, I think there's this aspect of like, hey, I'm gonna be a doctor, right? Like, and that's a good thing, right? We get respected. However, just like um, this comment says, we are held to a new standard. We're held to like, you're a doctor, everything you do has to be perfect. And what we have to remember is that like, we're doctors, but under all the white coat, we're just a human like any other profession. And humans make mistakes because humans are, are inherently not perfect. And not only are we not perfect, but our patients are not perfect. So even if we do the exact correct perfect treatment, the patient may not do it. And so if we start, we start here, and that's our possible best treatment, the patient, you know, bites on a, on a nut or eats something sticky, or gets in a car accident, that may still break, fracture, um, fail, because you have two imperfect beings working together to try to do something perfect. Now, many times we have success, right? Many times we have success. We have a lot of science behind what we do. We have a lot of research behind what we do. However, I think it's just so important, this open communication between doctors, patients, to understand that we have to think about biology. We have to think about you know, chewing function, musculature, diet, genes, genetics. All of this isn't usually taken into play. So you would make a great politician, Kyle. Oh no, that is the worst thing you could ever tell me. I hate politicians. Um, <laughs> I, I would like to be an advocate for our profession. But um, I'm not a big fan of politicians. So, uh, but thank you if that was meant to be a compliment. Let's talk about one more, one more topic, and uh, and then we'll go back to our Sunday. 
Let's talk about professional jealousy. As the holidays come about and people are inside, you know, stay at home orders, it's gonna be a hard month for many people. And so what they're gonna be doing is they're gonna be on their phone, they're gonna be looking at all the beautiful dentistry that is shown on social media. And many of that is shown as a business transaction, right? Look at how good I am, all the patients should come to me, or if you're a, referring, a referral-based system, you should refer all your, all your patients to me. And I think, especially the leaders in dentistry need to start posting real life, not just their highlight reel. So look at this crown that fractured. Look at this implant that failed. Look at this sinus graft that got infected. Because this gives the general dental community, patients and dentists, the real life situation. Yes, most of our stuff works. You know, most of the implants I place integrate. I posted last week or whenever it was, one that didn't integrate because that happens. And like many people will tell you, if you say you don't have implants that don't integrate, you don't place enough implants or you're just lying. And this happens with every type of specialty, whether it's perio or ortho or pedo or sedation. Sometimes people have problems with sedation. I mean, every specialty and every procedure doesn't have a 100% success rate. So I think it's important for many of the people that have big followings on social media to post real life because the professional jealousy that leads to depression is real. And I've talked about it with um, you know, the light siders in my light side course, they felt it. Um, I've talked to, to other doctors, especially young doctors, they feel it. They see like, oh my gosh, the photography is amazing. They're bloodless surgeries. They, the margins are indetectable. Most of the time that's true, right? But sometimes it's not. And we need to show this. We need to show this because what this can lead to is I'm not good enough and I associate my purpose with my profession, which is a big problem that we talk about in my course. I, I, I focus, I, my brain's not working right now. I identify my purpose in life with my profession. Now, that's wrong. They shouldn't do that, right? We should have purposes outside of dentistry. However, many young doctors haven't learned this yet, right? So they say, okay, if, if, if my purpose in life is to be a dentist and my dentistry isn't perfect, then my self-worth isn't perfect. And this is where you get stress and depression and this is where suicide comes in and we have this big problem in our profession. So I encourage everybody to, you know, if you have a social media following, post a failure every once in a while. Post a failure because there's going to be dentists that see this and are gonna say, hey, they're just like me or I'm just like them and we're all humans and we all make mistakes. And another thing I would say is don't be afraid to talk to patients about failures. I was afraid of this early on. However, I learned that the more you talk to patients about failures, the more they trust you actually the more that you don't feel like a salesman to them. And they trust you more, they're willing to say like, yeah, do whatever you have to do. You know, I understand that it's expensive and it takes time. Thank you for explaining this to me. And that has been such a lesson. I mean, it took me about seven years to learn that lesson. So it was a hard lesson to learn, but I just passed it on to you in 10 seconds. Talk to your patients and be open with them about treatment, about complications, what could happen, what may not happen, what the fees would be if there is a complication. You know, it's not always required for the dentist to cover these, these complications. And that has really taken stress off of me. It's allowed me to have better relationships with my, with my patients and ultimately allow me to practice 
be happier, know my purpose, and know that my purpose is outside of dentistry, and enjoy my life. Enjoy my life. So um, I thank you guys for coming on this Sunday. I hope that these little tidbits and little reminders of things you know, allows you to get ready for Monday and like, let's go have a great day. Let's go um, enjoy our practice. Let's be happier. Let's be, you know, present when we get home for our family or our friends or our dogs or whoever it is that, that, that you are um, coming home to. Even virtually now who you're coming home to. So um, I, my course, my next light side course is coming up. Sign up start in January. So you can get on the wait list in my uh, link in bio and in my bio there or just message me if you have a question. Um, I'm so appreciative of all of my friends, followers, colleagues, dentists, and I'm sorry I've been gone for the last three months, but I've been serving my light side community. So um, I'll probably see you guys this week. Bye.